Welcome to today's NBA 2K23 roguelike rebuild. Today, we're not going to be taking a modern team and trying to rebuild them using roguelike methods. Instead, we're going to be going back to the past, 1983 to be specific. And this time, we're going to take on the Houston Rockets, who had just come off one of the worst campaigns in franchise history, winning only 14 games, which did give them the number one and number three overall draft pick, where they picked up Ralph Sampson and Rodney McRae. Now, uh, Houston fans will remember that during this season they improved to 29 wins, but that was still not the best and led to them uh, tanking, I guess, because they ended up picking Hakeem Olajuwon the next year. So we're going to see if we can speed up this rebuild just a little bit, maybe get them a championship before they win they, they 94 and 95. Is that correct? Maybe it's 93, 94, but try and speed things up just a little bit. And this is pre-Jordan. Uh, so we don't have to worry about him, but we do have to worry. But there are some very strong teams now. Of course, the league is not as big, so there aren't quite as many tough, tough teams. But we have like you know these San Antonio Spurs with George Gervin, Ernest Gilmore. Uh, the SuperSonics look kind of decent, but the big hitters are, <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh wait, that's that's every team. Sorry, uh, but of course we have the 76ers are good. Uh, but the one that made me laugh thinking they were all 90s, but not quite that bad. So we have the Boston Celtics, who are a big dynasty. And then if we can go over, of course, well, actually, this team's not too terrible with the Jazz either, but the other big hitter is, of course, the Los Angeles Lakers. So those are going to be the two teams we're hoping we can pick up a person from uh, if the wheel lets us do that. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So we'll play this first game at the Spurs and hope we can pick up a victory. Okay, we did not get a victory in either of our first two games, which means we have to go spin the bad wheel so let's head over to the wheel if you don't remember how this works basically what's going to happen is after every win we get to spin a wheel after every three game winning streak we could spin a better wheel and after every five game winning streak or we get 10 games one total or one of our players makes the all-star team or wins an end of season award we get to spin a really really good wheel the milestone wheel and for every time we lose two games in a row we have to spin this bad wheel for every time we lose four games in a row or hit 10 losses, we have to spin the really bad wheel. Um, so we're going to start off with this nice little easy wheel. It's going to still suck, but hopefully it won't be too bad. First up, we're getting minus 10 offense on Rodney McRae. So not the best start. One of our good players already taking a hit. Uh, last time I did this, I kind of showed you all every time the changes I was making. I'm not going to do that quite as much this time just to speed things up, but I'm going to go take down some of Rodney McRae's offensive stats. All right, and that's four losses in a row, so now we have to spin the really bad wheel. And we get minus 20 defense on Rich Livingston, who is only 66 overall, so if you're going to get a negative, it's good to have it on him. Okay, after we have made Rich Livingston one of the worst rebounders in the league, we have finally gone and picked up our first victory, which is good because we lost five games in a row. So let's see, hopefully we can get something good here for one of our good players. It's going to be plus 10 defense. On Robert Reed, who is our second best player by overall. So, all in all, not a bad look. All right, unfortunately, even though we've made Robert Reed into one of the better perimeter defenders in the league, uh, we've lost two games in a row again. So, back to the bad wheel. And we get minus 10 offense. Oh, this one stings. It's to Ralph Sampson, our best player. Oh, no. Fortunately, the good thing about this era of the NBA is that big men don't need, don't need to shoot. So, I just put his three-point shot down to 39 from 49 so hopefully that doesn't hurt him too much okay we have pick up a victory stopping that losing skid just barely over the nuggets actually we you know most of our games are pretty <laughs> we've been outscored pretty poorly pretty badly so uh i mean look at this detroit pistons game <laughs> uh it's definitely a struggle out here but hopefully we can start turning things around pretty quickly so let's go to the board all right we're adding two badges to ralph sampson this is big this is good Okay, Samson has quite a few badges already, which is very good. Uh, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to give him... Uh, I'm going to just go gold on anchor, and then I think... Hmm. Ooh, brick wall might be good. Ooh, or re let's give him... We're going to give him Hall of Fame rebound chaser. So those are the two badges we're adding. Hopefully that makes him even more of a threat down low on the defensive and offensive side of the ball. And we get back to back very close, but hey, look, it doesn't matter. As long as we're winning, we'll take it. So let's see what's going to happen on the wheel this time. All right, plus 10 offense. Can we get those three-point shooting numbers back for Ralph Sampson? No, it is going to go to Elvin Hayes, which to be fair, I mean, look, he's 38 years old, so he's not going to progress, but you can't progress in this mode anyways without, you know, rolling the dice. So 
hopefully it's okay. We'll see. All right, after putting points into his offensive rebounding, we're going for our first three-game winning streak. It's against the Suns, who are 7-4. and four. As you'll notice, we are 3-8, and eight, so... It's going to be a tough one for us to win, but let's see if it can happen. We did win. Oh, wow. I got to turn off injuries, but um, we did win. Don't worry, Robert Reed is not hurt. You can only get hurt if you roll something bad on the wheel. Um, but, oh, we actually won by quite a bit this game. 13 points. Okay, so let's go spin the better wheel. All right, we get plus 20 offense. And this is going on Alan Laville level, um, which could, should be pretty good. That'll give us, we can give him some three-point shooting. This is actually the team. I'm looking at the team now. Uh, I can flick it over there. Uh the we don't have any three-point shooting his is d plus craig elo is our best three-point shooter the b minus everyone else is pretty garbage so it'll be nice to bump his sh shooting up by 20 points and hopefully uh, get some more of that in the team so let's do it okay after putting his three-point shooting from 69 to 89 alan laville or level i'm not sure i should look that up but i'm not going to uh, is now up to a 78 overall, putting him up here with Robert Reed and Rodney McRae, tied for the third best player on our team. So looking very good for us right now. Let's get back and see if we can win some more games. We actually, so <laughs> I'm not going to cut away here. We actually beat the, at the time, 11-1 and 76ers, which as you'll remember, if we can look at this box score, check this out, y'all. They got Moses Malone and Julius Irving. A uh, very good team, but oh my lord, Ralph Sampson, 27 and 16. Jeez, and look at look at Craig Elo out there. Uh, oh, you know what? Bro, there's no three-point line. <laughs> I forgot. Making them better at threes doesn't matter in this age because there's no three-point line. Oopsies. Okay, God, I'm glad I looked at that because that changed things a little bit. Okay, so we want another game, so let's go back to the wheel. All right, we get plus 10 mental on Robert Reed. Okay, that's five. No, sorry, that's four wins in a row. Wait, no, that's five. That's five wins in a row. So, does that mean we get to spin the big wheel? No, it does not. We only get to spin the normal wheel. I might think about that later, but for now, I'm going to leave it as a only the big milestones. I don't want it to be having too often because then it can become overpowered. Anyways, let's go spin the little wheel. All right, we're getting plus ten offense on the man the wheel loves tonight. It's Robert Reed yet again. And with that, we have boosted Robert Reed's close range shot and his mid range shot, and he's now up to a 79 overall, breaking out of that three person tie we had for second place. Oh, the winning streak finally ends to the Bulls. Now they don't have Jordan, I don't think, correct? Yeah, this is this is the bad Bulls. Although, 19 rebounds, man, some stuff was happening in this era. All right, moving on. And that's back-to-back -back losses, this time to the Mavericks. We have to go back and spin the bad wheel, unfortunately. Actually, I'm looking at it now, my mistake. We have to spin the very bad wheel because we just hit our 10 loss milestone. Now you can see this wheel, there's quite a few bad things. The worst thing, of course, is the bad value trade, which means I have to pick a guy on the team. Now the weird thing about this day and age is the, tr the money they make is so low that it might actually make the bad value trades maybe not that bad. But basically, I have to take a player for the equivalent money that I would be getting back, but have him be like five plus overall lower than the guy that I have on my roster right now. So we'll spend this and hopefully we don't get that. It's going to be minus 20 defense on the old man, Elvin Hayes. All right, again, <laughs> I'm going to keep you here for this one because uh, Elvin Hayes, <laughs> um, you know, he, does, he has a couple things he does well, and uh, perimeter defense is not going to be one of them. So we're just going to bump this all the way down. Oh, it can only go down to 25. So what is that? Uh, uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, there we go. 25 is the m minimum you could get, actually, which I did not know. I thought it would go all the way down to zero. All right, that's going to be the change we make for him. Okay, and we have lost four more games in a row. Things are spiraling out of control after the five-game winning streak. Uh, let's see what happens on the bad wheel. All right, this one could be a doozy. It's a 10-day injury. Ooh, and it goes to Craig Elo, who's actually been doing pretty well for us right now. And that's another set of back-to-back -back losses. Oh, it's really spiraling out of control now, y'all. We get minus 10 athleticism. Ooh, it almost landed on Ralph Sampson, but it's Terry Teagle. And we do beat the Chicago Bulls, who are, I believe, yeah, 2 and 16. So a, a, definitely a victory we should have had. So let's go back to the wheel. And it's plus 10 mental on Chuck Nevitt. Now, here's the thing about Chuck Nevitt. Not very good, but if you'll notice, he's seven foot five. So if we can get him spinning a couple more times, he could be a good player for us, actually, you know, to pair with the seven foot four Ralph Sampson. So hopefully we see him 
make it a few more times in the wheel. All right, that's another set of back-to-back -back losses. We are floundering quite a bit right now, so we really need to turn things around quickly. Let's go back to the wheel. All right, it's a minus 10 mental on Wally Walker. Okay, we avenged that earlier loss on the Jazz, picking up a victory here. Let's check out the wheel. Hopefully we can get something good going. And it's going to be plus 10 offense. Well, this time we wanted it to be Ralph Sampson, but instead it's Terry Teagle yet again. And that's back-to-back -back wins, this time over the Pacers. And we're getting more offense. Let's go! It's on Ralph Sampson. Come on. Okay, there are a lot of directions we could go with Ralph here. Now, the thing we maybe could do is mid-range, but I don't... In this era, like, does it even matter? I think what's going to be better is if I go... I'm tempted to do free throw, but I think what I'm going to do is go offensive rebound up to an 89. Just to make him a little bit more dangerous down in the post. Now, that brings him up to an 87, which is great. The better thing is if we can beat the Clippers, who are nine... No, they're, they're 500. If we can beat the Clippers, that brings us to 10 wins. That's a milestone. So let's see if we can do it. We cannot. <laughs> but we do beat the Supersonics, which is a good win for us, actually, because this team is not bad. They got Jack Sigma, who scored 37 points, 20 free throws the man took. Uh, and on our side, not quite as dominant of a performance from Samson, but still, it's a winning one, so we'll take it. So we get to spin the milestone wheel. This is big. Let's head over. Okay, now, if you haven't done one of these with me before, it's pretty simple. So we're going to spin this wheel, and all these are major boosts, right? So we could get plus 75 to any category. We get 15 badges. We could plus plus 50 to every single category, meaning you get 50 for offense, defense, athleticism, and mental. Or, this is the big one, take a player from your last 10, this should say wins. Okay, so the last 10 games we won, which we'll, we'd have to look at when we get there, but we get to pick one player from those teams. I have an idea of who I'd want, <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, but, you know, we might not get it. So, it's important to remember, we only get to use this each of these things one time maximum. So, we don't get to take unlimited players if it keeps coming up, which you do it once. So, let's see what we get. All right, it's not quite as fun as we would maybe like, but it's plus 75 defense. And this is a big one. It's going to Rodney McRae. All right, now the good part about defense is that it's very, there's not a lot of categories we can go into. So we have 75 points to work with. Okay, so let's see. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to max his perimeter defense. That's going to be really big for us. So that's... 76, so that's 10, that's 20, 21, 22, 23, okay, so 23 we've used so far, should we just max his interior, that's 23, 33, uh, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, okay, 49 so that gives us 26 left to work with so let's go 20 or 10 uh that was 53 so 63 is 20 and then we have six more so we can just go this up to 68 i believe i did the math correct if i did it wrong i apologize but let's see what this turns mr rodney mccray into hopefully a stud, 82 overall. That's a big jump. He went from 78 to 82. So big jump for Rodney McRae. It's exactly what you want to see. Let's give those two very young, very studly superstars. Now, I am noticing here, he doesn't have very many badges. So it'd be nice to get some badges here. Also, the fact that he's 6'7", 220, and Ralph Sampson is, what is that? Uh, five, nine inches taller, but only eight pounds heavier. <laughs> it's a little distressing, but you know, oh well. Um, okay, so let's move on and see if we can pick up some more victories here with our new and improved Rodney McRae. Well, uh, <laughs> things have not changed much, unfortunately. We picked up back-to-back -back losses, which brings us ever closer to the bad milestone, but it does mean we have to spin the bad wheel once again. All right, it's a 10-day injury. Of course, it goes to Ralph Sampson when we have to play the Celtics to not lose our, tenth, our 20th game. <laughs> All right, unfortunately, Ralph Sampson has had the win knocked out of them. He's going to be out for 10 days which means he's going to miss this game against the Celtics, which will be our 20th loss, I'm fairly confident, because they are 24-6. and six. And I don't want to trade. And we do lose, which means, oh my god, we lost 109-77. to 77. Oh boy, okay, and we got to go spin that big bad wheel. 
The injuries keep a coming. We have a 20 day injury for Terry Teagle. And I will note, you may have noticed that, you know, I've moved these things around. I have been randomizing every once in a while just so we can get a little bit of a shake up now and then. We are, however, able to pick up a victory against the Phoenix Suns, even without uh, Ralph Sanson in the club. So that's good for us. And we get plus 10 athleticism for our man Wally Walker. All right, we get a win or a loss and then a win. This time we beat the Jazz just barely. I believe Samson's back, so that could maybe be the reason. Or maybe he's not. I don't know. We'll see if he's back. But anyways, let's go spin the wheel. All right, this time it's plus 10 mental for the grumpiest old man, Elvin Hayes. Okay, we get another win against these Supersonics, who are, like us, not doing too well this season, which is kind of surprising. They have not a bad team. Uh, but let's go spin that wheel. And we're getting plus 10 defense. And it's going to Robert Reed, which means <laughs> um, he's going to be even more of a defensive stud. Actually, I got my players mixed up. I apologize. This is Robert Reed, not Rodney McRae, uh, but Rodney, Rodney Reed, Robert Reed, excuse me, is going all the way up to 95 on his perimeter defense. Now, uh, as we exit out of here, you're going to see something that's very bad for us. Uh, of course, Ralph Sampson is still out. He'll be back soon. Uh, but the bad news is that we have the Lakers in back-to-back -back games. So, Probably going to lose these two. They're 24 and 8. We're probably going to get drubbed pretty bad here. Let's see what happens. We don't want to trade. We get a big L. And another one. Uh, okay, we're going to have... Okay, Samson's back. And it doesn't matter. We still lose by 10. So let's go spin that bad wheel. Okay, it's going to be minus 10 defense. Or Allen level. Laville? Still don't know. But we do come back and pick up a victory over the Portland Trailblazers. And grab plus 10 athleticism for Rodney McRae. All right, we did take a loss to the Spurs, which is not too surprising, but we did go beat the Kings right after that. So let's go spin the good wheel. We get plus two badges on Chuck Nevet. Okay, Nevet doesn't have anything. <laughs> uh, so what do we want to give him? Maybe, ooh, actually, you know what? Look, he's not going to do much, but he's going to be a great screener. <laughs> Chuck Nevet with Hall of Fame brick wall. And we pick up another victory, this time against the Denver Nuggets. We get plus 10 athleticism on a man who frankly probably needs it, Craig Elo. Okay, I was disparaging Frank. He's actually not, or Frank, <laughs> Craig, and he's actually not that bad. But we're going to boop, boop. We're going to boost his, uh, let's do speed up to 84. And we get a third victory, this time against the San Antonio Spurs, who have had our number so far this year. But we take them out and we get to spin the good wheel with a outside shot, by the way, to hit... 20 wins before the All-Star break. Now, is it going to happen? No, because the Lakers are right there. But it's possible. Let's go to the wheel and see if we can boost ourselves ahead of that. All right. Okay. This could be huge. The equal value trade. So what this means is I get to take a player from another team who has the same trade cap as someone on my team. But I, they could be way better. So, for instance, let's say that, I don't know, we spin on Craig Elo and he's making like 100 k and we go find... That, uh, you know, I'm, who who would be great? Daryl Dawkins is making 100K. We can, right around that same mark, we can add them. So this could be huge. Let's see who's going to be our trade person. All right, the player we will be trading is Alan Laville. Uh, it kind of stinks because we have put a lot into him so far, but hopefully we can find somebody with his contract that's about as good as him or better. All right, Laville has a $500,000 contract, so we have to find a player who fits in that range, and we can make a trade. So let's see who we could add. Okay, I've done a fair bit of searching, and there's actually quite a few players who are right in this range. Uh, I wanted to replace Allen with a point guard just because that's the position he's leaving, and he'd be leaving a big hole, as you can look at our team. Like, we'd have, what, Rich Livingston would be our point guard if it wasn't for him. Uh, and it's not like, like, Craig Elo could come in and play. I mean... Oh, actually, Terry Teagle can't play in there. Um, so I wanted to replace him with a point guard. Uh, there were a lot of options. Uh, also, there was the potential almost. We could almost do Larry Bird. We could almost make it work, but he's a little too expensive, um, which, you know, is not that surprising. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of players we could have worked in here. I decided to go with Dennis Johnson. Obviously, that's a seven-point upgrade from Allen, so it's going to be a big upgrade for us. Uh, and hopefully this will lead us to the promised land. All right, so just looking at the roster now, of course, uh, you can see like Livingston looks like he's the only point guard, but Dennis Johnson can switch over and play point guard, and then Robert Reed will be a shooting guard. 
Uh, Wally Walker will play a little bit here, but really I think it's mostly going to be Rodney McRae playing small forward. Elvin Hayes picking up some minutes at power forward. And then, of course, Ralph Sampson at center. So we're a little like thin, but we do have some solid players now. Almost four players in the 80s. So it's looking good at this stage. We're almost the all-star break. If we can get Ralph or Dennis Johnson into the all-star team, that would be huge for us. Uh, let's see what happens. All right, the immediate returns were not great, but we did uh, follow up this loss to the Jazz with a win against the Warriors. So it's not all bad. Let's go spin that wheel. And we get plus 10 offense on Craig Elo. The wheel seems to love him today. All right, unfortunately, we cannot pick a victory heading into the All-Star break, but let's see if we make it into any of these teams. All right, I was a little worried at first, but the good news is, and actually, wait, why, is Magic not on a team? No, no, it's just the background. I, okay, usually that would be a Lakers background, so it's a bit weird, but anyways, uh, fortunately, Ralph Sampson did make the All-Star team also. Now, he's still in the East because he just got traded, but Dennis Johnson made the all-star team too. So we have two all-stars. And it does not mean we get two milestone spins. We just get one for the all-star team selection. So let's go over there and spin that wheel. And hopefully we can get another trade that completely changes the team even more. Okay, plus 75 defense is off the board. So we only have these things left over here. They're all good. But of course we want the take a player because that just means we get somebody, which is going to be great. So let's hope we get that. We are not taking a player, but we are giving someone plus 75 offense. So let's go see who that's going to this time. It's going to the new guy, Dennis Johnson, getting plus 75 offense. All right, of course, Dennis pretty solid all around. What we're going to do is we're going to boost both of his shots up all the way. So it was 82. So this is 17. And this is 27 plus 9, 36. I just want to get those maxed out and then we're going to go up this to 90 so 30 40 uh, i want to boost his free throw up to 90 so it's 45 uh, let's go ahead and do this up to 90 that's 40 49 90 59 69 and then finally i want to do his pass vision up six points that should be 75 if my math is correct so let's see what this does for his overall. Hopefully he's up to around like 87, 88. He's 87. So we have two 87 overall stars on the team. Both of them looking very, very solid. And we should be looking good as we go out of the All-Star break. All right, our first two games back from the All-Star break have unfortunately resulted in back-to-back -back losses. So in spite of our team being much better, <laughs> we're going to have to go spin that wheel again. This time we get minus 10 offense for Terry Teagle, but we come back and get a win against the Knicks. And this time we get plus 10 defense for the bottom of our bench, Rich Livingston. <laughs> okay, now this is potentially a big one because if we win this, we get to get our milestone. So if we can win, uh, okay, we got a tough stretch here of games. It'd be great to win this because we're probably gonna lose these two, <laughs> which will get us our negative milestone, but let's see how it goes. And we did get a victory over the bullets, which means we get to go spin the milestone wheel. So we could be in the market for a new player. All right, we were very close, but instead we're gonna get plus 50 to all four stats, which all things considered is probably the second best option on the wheel. Let's see who it goes to. Oh boy, it's Rodney McRae yet again. This is gonna be huge. All right, now we get to add 50 to every single thing, which means offense, defense, athleticism and mental uh so let's see okay 50 50 so this would be okay let's see how good rodney mccray was remember he was a think an 82 when we started this and he's now an 86 so he's at four points we now have three guys 85 or above so this is looking very good for us uh hopefully maybe we can not lose another two games the rest of the season. That's not happening. Okay. But yeah, if we can get one more milestone and make the playoffs, that would be huge. Uh, let's see how we do against the 39 and 8 76ers. Not well. Although only lost by two. That's not terrible. Uh, can we avoid back to back losses? I'm assuming not. Oh, we beat the Celtics. Oh my God. We beat the Celtics by uh, 15 points. Oh, goodness. We could just spin the wheel. This is awesome. All right. This time it's going to be plus 10 mental. On the Chuckster, Mr. Nevitt, seven foot five giant. All right, I want to take a quick break from uh, simulating games to come in here and let you know that we are right now just outside 
of a playoff spot. So we need to turn it around a little bit more, but we're within striking distance of making the playoffs. I think if we make the playoffs, we have a chance to do some damage. Now that we've added a couple guys, remember we have 32 games left. So definitely a good chance for us to get at least one more milestone here and maybe make a run at this thing. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I miscounted and wasn't paying attention. We got our 30th loss. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to spin the milestone loss for this Nets loss. And then we're going to start over a new loss streak here. Uh, and hopefully we can turn it around against the Clippers. But we'll see how it goes. All right, somebody's losing 20 defense. And it's going to be the Chuckster once again. All right, we get a win against the Clippers, which means we're getting plus 10 mental on Robert Reed. Okay, and with that upgrade on Robert Reed, it means we now have four players in the 80 overall. So looking very good. Hopefully we can turn these into some wins and we can push into the playoffs. Okay, we did take a big loss to the uh, Phoenix Suns, but we came back and beat the Bucks, so that's good. We're going to get another plus 10 mental, and this time it's going to Elvin Hayes, the elder statesman of the team. And that's back-to-back -back wins against the Dallas Mavericks, which means we're getting plus 10 offense for a guy the wheel really loves, uh, Terry Teagle. <laughs> All right, and this is a big one. We've picked up our third win in a row, which means we've just been the medium tier wheel, which I think we've only done one other time so far this season. So this could be hopefully a big move for us. All right, we're getting plus 20 offense on Mr. Craig Elo. So we're going to make him an even better shooter from outside. All right, and we have now made Craig Elo a 75 overall. So slowly but surely getting all these players moved up just enough to be dangerous. And there is another win, this one by 17 points against the Supersonics. This time we get plus 10 defense. And it's going to go to McCray, which could be a problem because he's pretty much maxed out defensively. I'll show you here in a second. Yeah, so we don't have a lot to work with here on McCray's defense. Uh, we have plus 10, so I guess we'll go 9 here. And then we'll give him an extra 1 steal. I mean, this man is basically becoming like near perfect defensively, which is really awesome. And that's another win. That makes five in a row this time against the Kings by nine. So let's go spin that wheel once again. We move to the other side of the ball with plus 10 offense. This time for a player we haven't seen almost the entire save, Major Jones. So Jones doesn't have a lot to work with. Uh, so basically what I'm going to just do is give him plus 10 to his offensive rebounding so he can help off the bench uh, getting the ball back to our good players. Yeah. <laughs> And that is another three in a row, this time over the Golden State Warriors. So we are, that's six in a row. That's eight of our last 10. We're actually going on a roll after we had a little bit of a tough go earlier on in the season. But let's go spin that medium tier wheel. We are two wins away from our next milestone. Uh, so we are on a good pace to finish the season in the playoffs. And over on the wheel, we get plus 20 defense. And it's going to go to Wally Walker. And the winning ways continue, this time against the Denver Nuggets. And we get plus 10 offense on Ralph Sampson. So we'll get a nice little upgrade to our best player. Okay, we find... Oh, man. <laughs> the Suns have had our number. We lost this one by 29. We were a little closer here, only losing by 20. But they stop us in our tracks, finally. This Suns team, can we just check and see who they have? Uh, they got Walter Davis, Larry Nance, Mo Lucas... Alvin Adams, James Edwards. So yeah, pretty deep, which could be our problem because our team does not run very deep. And we get back-to-back -back losses, picking up a L at San Antonio, which means someone is getting minus 10 defense. And it's Rodney McRae, which if anybody can spare some defense, it is Rodney. <laughs> okay, we pick up a victory against the Cavs, which means we have hit 30 wins, which means we have to spin the milestone wheel once again. This could change everything. Unfortunately, it's just plus 75 mental, so we probably are not going to get the take a player this time. Uh, we could maybe do it. We have, let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 games left. So if we can go better than 500, we have a shot. Uh, but otherwise, our only chance is if we get a player in the All-NBA rankings. But we're going to add 75 mental to somebody. And it's going to be Craig Elo, which might be a little boring. But to be honest, we need some more bench depth, so this is not too terrible. You might think like there's some strategy here, but really the strategy is like make the math as easy as possible. Okay, so we're just going to do 85s across the board. Actually, you know what? In saying that, let's not do 85s across the board. Let's get this up to 93 because I would like for him to be more of an offensive player anyways. So that's perfect. Okay, let's see how he does in his overall. He went up from a 75 to a 77. So he is... Definitely moving, which is really good to see. Um, unfortunately, like all of our players are shooting guards, so <laughs> that's a bit of a problem, but you know, what can you do? 
We get another win this time against the Clippers. We're grabbing plus 10 offense for Mr. Ralph Sampson. And with that, Sampson is now up to an 88 overall, making him our clear best player for now. And we get another win over the Clippers, giving us three in a row, which means we get to spend the medium wheel. So let's go check it out. All right, we get another equal value trade. This could be huge. Remember, this is how we got Dennis Johnson earlier. So hopefully we can get a good player to trade for our trade bait. Let's check out who it is. Okay, our trade bait is not too sexy. It's Terry Teagle on a $250,000 a year contract. You might be wondering like, hey, it's past the trade deadline. How are you doing trades? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I just left. This time I decided to leave the trade deadline the whole time. We may change it in the future. I don't know. I'm kind of like playing around with the format a little bit, but we're going to trade Terry Teagle and hopefully get a big upgrade. So I'll see you when I have the player. Okay, so... <laughs> All right, the way it works, right, is you get to find someone with an equal value contract. It's obviously benefiting me most because I get to find the best contract. And there are some really bad contracts out there, which means we go and sign Ricky Green. <laughs> We're trading Ricky Green, 86 overall. It does uh, kind of give us a log jam at the shooting guard position because um, Ricky Green will move to point guard, which will move Dennis Johnson over to shooting guard, which means we kind of have to move some stuff around, but we should make it work. Um, and this is going to be our trade. Sorry to the jazz fans out there. You have just lost one of your best players, but you know, you can handle it. Uh, so Terry Teague for Ricky Green, put it in the books. All right. So I just wanted to show you the lineup and kind of the, uh, the rotation as it were, uh, because as you can see, we've moved any Dennis Johnson back to the shooting guard position. Uh, Ricky Green's took over at point guard. Rodney McRae is playing here at small forward, what I might do actually is move him back. The problem with McRae is he's only six foot seven, so he's not super tall, which is not a terrible problem when you have Ralph Sanson at seven four back him up. But I don't know, having him, I do want to get him and Reed on the court at the same time. So as much as I want to have Reed coming off the bench because he's our best bench player, I do think maybe it makes more sense to uh, switch some positions around and have Elvin Hayes coming off the bench. Uh, as the seventh person off the bench and Craig Elo can be our sixth man, but I'll play with it a little bit and uh, we'll see you when we play the next game. All right. I was going to give you an update on the playoff standings, but it's a little weird because for some reason we're in third place and yet we have, we're 19.5 games back. So it should put us in seventh. So I'm not really sure how we're a three seed right now. Uh, maybe the playoffs just worked weird back in the day. I'm not, quite clear how this is working but we're just gonna roll with it and we'll see if we win some more games oh my days we beat the lakers by 17 points okay let's go spin that wheel all right we get plus 10 athleticism on elvin hayes the old man so he probably needs that athleticism boost he's probably pretty slow all right we got pipped by the kings but we came back and beat the nuggets so we get to spin the good wheel once again and we get plus 10 offense on Elvin Hayes. The wheel loves this man right now. We grab another win this time over the Mavericks, which gets us a plus 10 mental boost for Craig Elo. All right, and I have to point out before we move on and sim this game that if we beat the Hawks, we will be above 500 for, I think, the first time all year. We started the season off on a loss streak, correct? Yeah, so the first time all year we'd be above 500. March 24th, is this the day? The Hawks kind of suck, so we might have a chance. We do. We beat the Hawks. That's three games in a row, too. So we get to go spin the medium tier wheel. Uh, let's go do it. Oh, this medium tier wheel is helping us out so much. We got another equal value trade. And it's going to be Elvin Hayes, who we have brought up quite a bit this year. Uh, look at his contract right now. It's 350 k Because I just did that one for Ricky Green, I know there's going to be a lot of good players. We would love to bring in a power forward at this point. Uh, so let's go see who we can get. <clears throat> um, okay, so we went out and we found our man. It is Jeff Ruland uh, from the Washington Bullets. Uh, obviously, this is quite the upgrade for us. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is how it works. He's actually pretty much the only big uh, that was, I mean, obviously there's players, but he's the only big that's decent that we can make an upgrade for. But we're making a big, big upgrade here. Um, you could argue, I mean, it's starting to get close to the, territory of cheating but you know we can only do what the wheel tells us so if it didn't give us so many trades it wouldn't want us to make these trades so we're gonna go with it all right i'm gonna show you the updated uh rotation as you can see our entire starting lineup is 85 86 plus actually uh, uh ruin did go down to an 87 after i moved into power forward but it had to be done because he's not starting over ralph sampson and this also means we get robert reed coming off the bench 
as our sixth man. So that's huge to have him coming off the bench. Still Craig Elo back there uh, and Wally Walker. So looking very good. We could definitely see a milestone victory pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and move on. <laughs> okay. I was really high on us. And then look, we fell below 500, losing back-to-back -back games against the Nuggets and the Lakers. So it's not all, you know, not all the kinks have been worked out just yet, but hopefully we can do it in time for the playoffs. Let's go spin that bad wheel for now. All right, we get minus 10 mental. And it's going to go on a Craig Elo. All right, we turn things back around and pick up a big win over the Blazers. And we get a plus 10 athleticism boost <laughs> for Craig Elo again. We got to shuffle this, man. Puts Craig Elo up to a 78. Very quickly, we're going to have six guys all in the 80s. All right, now we get to play the Jazz, which is a team that is very good, but we just stole one of their good players. So can we beat them? We can. We pick up a victory over the Jazz. Uh, bringing us only two wins away from our next milestone. And we get to add two badges on somebody. And it's finally not Craig Elo. This time instead it is the Chuckster coming back, getting some badges. Also, just looking at this man, 75217. Come on, man. Put some weight on those bones. All right, we're going to keep it pretty simple and upgrade Craig to a silver, yeah, silver rebound chaser. We pick up another win here. That's three in a row. Will we get another trade? I hope not, because it's kind of getting a little ridiculous at this point. All right, this time it's just plus 20 mental. <sighs> but we are right back to Chuck Nevitt. <laughs> okay, and that is our 40th victory, which means we get to spin the milestone wheel and get ourselves something big to end the season. Okay, depending on who this goes to, this could be huge. We get 15 badges. And it's going to our sixth man, Robert Reed, who we will be able to make into quite the player with this. All right, so I have chosen to just focus on giving him a bunch of Hoff badges. I mean, I could probably give him a bunch of like lesser tier badges, but basically we're going to go with Bully. Actually, actually, Bully's going to be on gold because I only have 15, not 16. So maybe I'll change that number next time so it makes more sense. Uh, but Bully is on gold, and we have also added Hall of Fame Anchor, Hall of Fame Clamps, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame Glove, uh, and I think, yeah, Hall of Fame Pick Dodger. So we're trying to make him into as much of a... actually. Let's go Interceptor over Pick Dodger because I want to make him into as much of a perimeter defender as possible to come in and lock down the other team's best player. And I didn't know the badges can increase your overall, but Reed goes from an 81 to an 83 with those 15 new badges. And we get another win over the Supersonics who are doing really poorly. They've only won 20 games this season, so uh, maybe there'll be a future save for them. <laughs> it's going to be another two badges, this time on Wally Walker. Okay, there's not a ton we can do here, so all I'm going to do is do, I'm going to give him bronze, catch and shoot, and corner specialist, catch and shoot. Or, er, <laughs> corner specialist, bronze, and catch and shoot, bronze. <laughs> Excuse me. Ugh. And that is our third win in a row, so we get to go spin the medium tier wheel once again. This time it's plus 20 offense for Dennis Johnson. All right, Dennis is Pretty much maxed, every, I mean, like, in any, everything we need for him. Not quite maxed, I guess, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go 20 and a three-point shot. I know threes don't count, but just having him be able to shoot outside could be huge. So we'll bump this up to an S74 and see how that does us. That's another win, a 122 to 75 against the Nuggets. So an absolute drubbing over there. And we're getting plus 10 mental, and we're going back to Dennis Johnson. All right, pretty simple here. We're going to boost his offensive consistency up to 90. This could bring him up to 88, tying him again with, yes, he's up to 88 along with Ralph Sampson. So two 88 overall players looking very good. Also, now this is huge. We only have two games left, which means we cannot hit another negative milestone. So that is very good at this point. These last two games barely matter, actually. Uh, let me check. Uh, three. So we could, if we win the last two games, we could spin the medium wheel again, but I don't want to get my hopes up too much. Oh, we do get the win over the Spurs. There's a chance. All right, it's going to be plus 10 offense for Craig Elo. You know, because why not at this point? Okay, so uh, unfortunately, you're just going to have to trust me because it immediately jumps to the screen after you do the last game. We did win the last game against the Kings. So real quick, we're going to spin the medium wheel for the last time, at least until we get into the playoffs, which we should have made the playoffs, but we'll see in a second. All right, we're adding plus 20 offense on Ricky Green. Now that we've done that, let's check through these awards. Now remember, if either of our players, any of them, make the first, second, or third team All-NBA team, we get to spin the milestone wheel once again, which would be very good at this stage of the game. Uh, so as you can see, Larry Bird picks up MVP. Ralph Sampson, of course, wins Rookie of the Year. Should he get it for that? Also, Larry Bird shooting 77% from three. That Something's got to be off there. That cannot be correct. Uh, okay, Ralph Sampson, Rookie of the Year. Six man goes to Kevin McHale. 
Tree Rollins, Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, most Improved, Cliff Livingston. Coach of the Year, Brad Nelson. Jaden Woods wins your Executive of the Year. And on to this. Nobody makes the team from us here. Mark Aguirre, very good for him. Uh, there we go. Jeff Ruland comes over and makes it on second team, which is a bit surprising, but we'll take it. Ralph Sampson gets on third team. So we will definitely get to spend the milestone. Uh, we definitely, you know, met the requirements for sure. All defensive team. Look at the Bucks. Two players on the first team. Larry Bird, first team, all defensive. I assume that happened, but I'm not positive in real life. And Jeff Ruland, of course, making it for us. Uh, and in the rookie team, there's Ralph Sampson and also Rodney McCray. So both of our rookies making into the rookie squads. Very good for them. Uh, let's see how we did in the playoff standings. We are the sixth seed against the Denver Nuggets, who we have crushed a couple times. But before we do that, let's go spin the wheel to see who is going to or what we're going to get for our milestone victory. Okay, now this could be huge because if we get the take a player, we just get to, we just get to take whoever we want, right, from a, a team we beat in our last 10 wins. Um, the other thing is 75 athleticism, which is good but not great. So hopefully we get one of these to happen. Let's see how it goes. All right, it's just plus 75 athleticism. And it's going to go to Robert Reed. All right, this is actually the perfect player to get this because we really want to make him more of a defensive threat anyways for the playoffs. So we bring this up to 80. That's 6. That's 12. That is, what's that? 12 plus 5 is 17. Perfect. Okay, he was an 83 before. Let's see what he is now. Just an 84, so not a big jump, but still a jump. Okay, so we have the Nuggets. Okay, so the way this works, I may probably did not say this up front, so I'm just going to go through the rules really quickly. Um, basically, what's going to happen is if we win the first round, we can spin the normal, the basic wheel once, right? Not for every game, just if we win the round. Uh, if we win the second round, we get to spin the normal wheel three times. So it's going to be three spins to help us out. And then if we win this one, we get to spin the medium wheel once. Okay. Uh, so just try to help us a little bit on the way to the playoffs, but not too much. We may have to play around with that a little bit, obviously in our first save with the present day thunder. Uh, we did not make it very far, so we didn't get to test it very much. So let's see how this goes. Okay. First game is going to be a Denver win. <laughs> Second game is a... Oh, no. Crap, you got to be kidding me, guys. Okay, we pull one back. We pull another back. It's 2-2. Two, two. I don't know. Uh, I think this... I think it's game five. Is it a five-game series? I don't know for sure. Let's see. All right. Well, we got eliminated. It was a five-game series. We lost three to two. It was a very good, very valiant effort by us. Uh, I cannot, I honestly cannot believe. Can I see this Denver Nuggets team? How did they beat us? How did this Denver Nuggets team beat us? Uh, all right, let's see who wins these playoffs because I guarantee you we probably were not going to beat the Boston Celtics and the Celtics sweep, of course. Okay, well, for what it's worth, we turned a team... Uh, that had gone 14 and something to a team that finished. What did we finish, actually? Uh, where's the standings? We finished 45 and 37. Okay, we made the playoffs. We had, we have, we're very, very well set for the future. Uh, it wasn't perfect. You know, it never is. Uh, but a decent effort from the Houston Rockets. I will see you all when we do this again.